a price system. Any social system that affects its distribution of goods and services by means of a system of trade based on commodity valuation and employing any form of debt tokens or money. This constitutes a price system. Now, that definition may seem a little heavy, but a key word in it is valuation. This valuation of commodities and services is based on a condition that has existed throughout recorded history. That condition has been scarcity. We all know this is this through our use of the expression that we use all the time. We call it dirt cheap. That's the basis of our uh, use of the word scarcity. And also on the other end of the scale, how could anyone charge money for air? So it is, the air is so abundant that the price is forced down to zero. So, well, an exception is in downtown Tokyo where the smog is so bad at times that sidewalk machines dispense oxygen in exchange for some yen at certain times. A lot of people are sick of the expression in terms of, well, uh, that's this valuation business here. But in our examination of the stupid economy, we must look at what the terms of valuation are, namely money. Just what is it? An accurate but painful description is that it is a religion. And truly ecumenical, too, since every, virtually the whole human race has embraced it. More useful, however, is to ask what it is made of, or how solid it is, or where it is kept. Such a search, uh, such a search is futile, because money is not a real thing, but merely a concept, a handshake, a promise to pay sometime in the future when, as, and if. It should be obvious that money is based solely on faith and more closely resembles a verb, a way of acting towards something rather than a noun which is a something. Even more significant than the fact that money is not a thing or even a zero it is actually a negative. Yeah. Every dollar bill, check, CD, bond, credit card, etc., 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 signified that signifies that something has not been paid for yet and represents certificates or tokens that are owed to someone. This is the reason that these financial vehicles, including the dollars in our wallets, should be called debt tokens instead of money. Like all other religions, tons of print have been expended on describing, or more accurately, apologizing for the price system. The classic description is the Adam Smith model. And uh, before we go into this, I must tell you that <laughs> due to our time here, that this is going to be an economy model of the economy. <laughs> so it's not going to be all that detailed. But we must go into this. And briefly stated, factories produce goods for a price. Workers receive wages, debt tokens that is, and give them up in exchange for, the, for those goods. Thus we have, in theory, a system where debt flows in a circle. 
um, just like the song from the <laughs> that you've heard on Broadway. I can't remember the show. It says, everybody's happy, everything is grand, just as long as the money changes hands. <laughs> it's a wonderful song. I love it. Well, unfortunately, the theory breaks down in thousands of different ways in the real, not theoretical, world. If someone takes some uh, uh, debt out of the circle to save for a rainy day, as, the, as we quaintly put it, that money is not available to purchase the goods. By the same token, if you'll forgive the pun, <laughs> yeah, that's what I wrote, <laughs> by this debt token, okay, okay you, you can laugh at it. Uh, how many, how about, what happens when the company takes out a profit? Okay. Another, another thing is, if a new person is born, do all the other members of society chip in a little so that little tad can have a, a entrance to the circle? And thereby live? What happens when, in fact, machines and processes that produce new goods without any new labor. I mean, it screws up this circle somehow or other. And what happens to those who are unceremoniously dumped on the economic scrap heap for the same reason? All these interruptions and thousands more are normal and everyday consequences in the operation of a price system. There is nothing at all wrong. It's just the stupid economy. Well, how to keep such a Rube Goldberg contraption going was really not much of a problem. You see, it was and is handled very easily by merely inserting new debt into the circle. No problem at all. As we have already discussed, money is not a real thing. So there is no limit to how much we can print. It is, has no constraints in the physical world since it's not in the physical world. <coughs> Only the faith and credulity of the people pose any limit at all. Because that's what it is. It's just faith. And of course, everybody is doing it. We've all been roped into this. We sign home mortgage papers and order up hundreds of thousands of dollars to be printed in our name. Voila, more money in the circle. Okay. We elect political representatives to print hundreds of billions of dollars to purchase armaments for us. The result, of course, of course, we emphasize that, is a huge and growing amount of public and private debt. Now, add to this the fact that all this new debt is loaned into the circle at compound interest rates. <laughs> that means automatically that its rise has to be at an exponential rate, not just a linear rate, but as an exponential, a compound interest rate, as they say. And it is now zooming almost straight up towards the sky. Now, we should not be surprised because increasing debt is an absolute requirement of the stupid economy. Another part of the economy involves the flow of goods and services. Now, this is the physical. That is a real flow. And it is opposite in direction, in the same circle as the fiscal or the money flow. We hear it most often called the market. <laughs> and usually with a reverence in the reverent tone in the voice. The market, the free market, as they sometimes say. 
how they can say that is beyond me when well you just take out the R and you know what they're really saying <laughs> the free market the fee market now, some people call it a distribution system but is not and was never intended to be now there's a reason for this a fundamental reason several of them but the one of the reasons is I think it's basic <clears throat> is that if something is produced in abundance the price becomes dirt cheap and becomes lower therefore than the price of the wages and supplies to produce it so who's going to continue this long before everyone in society has one of these things no matter what it is could be food even the manufacturer is forced to quit making it so much for a distribution system the market protects itself you see the it's it, that may be too bad it's you know it's it's too bad that's all you can say but the first and foremost requirement of the market is to make money not distribute things you just can't do business when you have abundance but we also by the same token must get over the notion that the industrialists are bad guys that want to build things that wear out deliberately get us into wars or pollute and pillage the planet you see the real boss is not them it's the stupid economy <laughs> <laughs>